It's day 11 of the Body Shaping for Women Over 50 series and I've got a great moderate strength workout for us. Grab your dumbbells and let's go! All right, killer bees, let's get moving and grooving. And that means that we're getting started with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And this, this is day 11. I am so excited about today for no real good reason. Honestly, strength did not used to be my favorite kind of workout. I'm a cardio girl. If, if you don't already know that about me, I am such a cardio girl. But I tell you what, I have really come to appreciate the beauty and the majesty that is a strength training workout, especially, especially moderate strength. You know, I enjoy push day. I mean, you see me on push day. I'm, I'm having a good time. It's just, it's kind of hard. <laughs> so I really look forward to these moderate strength days where we're still getting all that beautiful muscle building goodness without quite as much effort. <laughs> wrong that I'm excited about that? <laughs> you guys, if you have not already, make sure that you open up the description box below and download the information resource that goes along with this series so that you can understand the method to my madness, why we're doing what we're doing and in what order we're doing it and how and all of that stuff. When you understand why we're doing things, let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. I feel like when you understand why we do things, it'll help you understand how to do it and, and what you can possibly get out of it. Here's the thing about a moderate strength day. I know that sometimes when we're lifting dumbbells that aren't especially heavy, I mean, they're heavy enough, it, it's work, but it doesn't really feel like, okay, I'm pushing to my max, I'm definitely building muscle today. I want you to know that even if it doesn't feel like much, it is always something. Anytime you are moving, you are doing something of some benefit to your body. And that means that kind of no matter what you're doing, unless you're injuring yourself, always have that caveat. Unless you are injuring yourself, you're always doing something good. Isn't that a nice thought? Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes. <sighs> really open up your chest. I always think about that really specifically. My chest muscles tend to be kind of tight. My, my chest and my shoulders, just they tend to carry tension in my body. So I always wanna make sure, because we're carrying dumbbells in our hands, that your shoulders are especially ready for this kind of work today. Even with moderate weights, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the risk of injury. Even with moderate weights, you do run the risk of hurting yourself if you're not completely warmed up, if you're not completely ready for this workout. So I really wanna make sure that you are completely ready for this workout, because here's what it looks like. I've got the handy dandy gym boss here, because I don't wanna count. Sit for intervals of 30 seconds, with 10 seconds of rest in between exercises so that I can explain what we're doing next. This is not, in any manner, a cardio workout. This is not, in any manner, a HIIT workout. I just have the timer going so that I don't have to think too hard about counting and cueing and telling you about pulling in your core and all that kind of good stuff, but pull in your core. <laughs> We're going to get started with wide open side steps. That means pretty much exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be stepping from side to side, really getting some inner and outer thigh work while we are also opening up the dumbbells at chest Height. So you're going to start with them here in the middle of your chest with your elbows high and your feet together. And we're going to open while we step from side to side. I'm going to go ahead and get my timer going so that we don't, we can count these. Are you going to go? There you go. All right. So hands here at your chest. We're opening and we're closing and we're opening. Oh my gosh. And we're closing. And what did I just say about how this isn't cardio? <laughs> kind of feels like it already. When we get going with something that I consider a big effort, truly, this kind of work is always a big effort for me. Any kind of the upper shoulder muscles always, always feel a little tougher to work for me than some of the other ones. That's why I got this one out of the way first. 10 seconds of rest. Then we're going to do a high knee single press up. So the weights are going to be here at your shoulders. We're going to bring up one high knee at a time. And while that knee comes up, the opposite hand is pressing up. So you're going across your body here, really thinking about pulling in your core, making sure that you're using excellent form. Of course. I mean, I know you know that, but I'm going to keep telling you that like through throughout this month, making sure that you are using excellent form. If at any point in time, this starts to feel like it's a little pushy, like
like it's a little bit tough, drop your weights. There's nothing to be gained except injury from pushing too hard. The thing about 10 seconds of rest, Coming up next, we're doing X marks the spot, and I'm actually gonna drop to just one dumbbell for that one, just because I find the grip easier. We've done these before, we're making a big X in front of us. We're chopping from shoulder to hip, and chopping from shoulder to hip. The thing about injuries is, they're kind of insidious. And frankly, at this age, I think all of us, we kind of let some of these minor aches and pains, like we just tend to think of it, oh, well, I'm just, I'm old. And so everything hurts. You know, my shoulder hurts or my hip hurts. I mean, that's normal, right? Yeah, kind of, but also kind of not. 10 seconds of rest. When it beeps again, we're gonna do snatches. And in fact, we're gonna have our feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. The thing about snatches is that this is a momentum-based exercise. So you're gonna kind of lean down into it. You're gonna pop your hips up so that your hand goes up overhead. And then we're gonna switch sides. Pop your hips so that your hand goes up over your head. We're not gonna get a ton of these done because there really is kind of a lot of setup while we're getting into the momentum of it. And I know that this really looks like an upper body exercise. It is absolutely a hip and glute complex exercise. You are using your butt to get that dumbbell up over your head. So weird. Coming up next, that is the only momentum based one that we've got today. Coming up next, we're doing bent over rows plus kickbacks. The thing about aches and pains, we're gonna row it up, we're gonna kick it back. You're bent over, but that is not to say that you are leaning over. Your back is super duper straight. Your core, of course, pulled in super duper tight. You're keeping your elbows very close to your body and pointed backwards the entire time. If you point your elbows out to the side, you're not really getting those triceps the way you want to. And I know that you wanna see some triceps toning. I know you do, because we all do. <laughs> that is the muscle I get asked about the most. <laughs> and 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing twisting front kicks, exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna have the weights right here at like our chest height. And as we kick forward, we're gonna twist into it and then we're gonna fall out of it. I'm gonna go a little bit faster than that, but not much. I just don't wanna fall. Here's the thing about slow moving work. The slower you go, the harder it is. So find the pace that feels like a really good challenge. You can feel your muscles working, but also it's not so slow that you just end up wobbling the entire time. Don't turn this into a cardio move though. <laughs> because I know that's the temptation, 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing a front punch side kick. Okay, so again, the weight's right here at your chest. You're going to punch to the front while your opposite leg is kicking to the side. A lot of balance, a lot of core strength, really thinking about keeping your core in tight while you're moving across your body like this. We've got a lot of cross body stuff today. That's on purpose. It's a little bit more challenging than doing things all at once. Using one arm and the opposite leg is difficult on purpose. When it beeps again, of course. Oh my gosh, we're gonna get 10 seconds of rest. Huh. Okay, coming up next, we got squatted side bends. So your feet are gonna be a little bit wider than hip width apart. Hands are gonna be up here on your shoulders. We're gonna come down into a bit of a squat and we're gonna bend to your side and up and to the other side. Core is pulled in nice and tight. You are only bending to the side as far as your spine will allow you. This is ab and oblique work paired with, yes, that lovely glute and hip work. And I know you feel it in your quadriceps as well. You're trying to get your elbow basically to, well, I'm getting mine to about my mid thigh, but the closer you get to your hip, ah, 10 seconds of rest, the closer you are to bending directly to the side. Coming up next, we're doing drinky birds. Ha, ha. We are gonna go back and forth though. We're gonna do 30 seconds of back and forth rather than all on one side. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but this is a circuit. I didn't tell you that. I don't know why you would have noticed that. It is a circuit today. That's why the intervals aren't very long. We're gonna come back to each of these exercises two more times. We're going three times through the circuit, which is rare. I almost never do that. And I apologize for not telling you earlier because I know that you usually like to get a little bit of warning when we're gonna do something three times. Three times is kind of a lot. <laughs> seconds of rest. But it's why the intervals are nice and short. We're not trying to get too much volume today. Coming up next, we're doing a twist down, press up. 
So you're reaching across your body and pressing up. So your opposite elbow down towards your opposite knee and then pressing up. Weights are here at your waist in between. So elbow to knee and then up above your head. As you press up, your palm faces out. This is a very complex exercise because there's kind of a lot to think about. As you're pushing your hips back, you're almost doing like a deadlift motion too. Okay, 10 seconds of rest. That was the circuit. That's where I was going with this. That was the circuit. And now we're just gonna do it two more times. Coming up first is those wide open side steps. So wide open, side step. Wide open, side step. You guys, the thing that I was talking about quite some time ago now was about how we learn to accept a little bit of injury as just normal, just aches and pains. And I will tell you that the thing about aches and pains is that lots of them can actually be alleviated. Not all of them. I'm not making you any promises about how you're gonna feel like a spring chicken again. Coming up next, we're doing a high knee press up. So it's the opposite hand and knee coming up at the same time. Weights are gonna be right here on your shoulder as your left knee comes up, your right hand presses up overhead. But I, I've noticed in myself my ability to ignore certain aches and pains and ignore certain signs and symptoms of an injury coming on because gosh darn it I just want to do what I want to do I want to keep pushing I want to push hard I want to lift heavy I want to run far I want to do what I want to do and therefore it's probably okay if I'm carrying tension it's probably okay if I'm a little bit achy and sore coming up next we're doing x marks this spot but here's the thing when we learn how to embrace moderation, here's our X marks the spot. We're chopping down, pulling your core nice and tight. When we embrace moderation, you'll find that a lot of your aches and pains actually go away on their own. You will also find that when we are doing a body shaping program like this, that taking actual rest days ha, makes a difference too. <laughs> The other thing that can really help is working on your core as much as we do. When you have a nice, strong core, everything else works more efficiently. Coming up next, we're doing snatches. Speaking of core, we're working on our core tomorrow. Tomorrow is core strength day, so it's gonna be basically an active rest day. So here we go, down into snatches, pop it up. Down into a snatch. Pop it up, which means that we're just eating our baseline today. This is meant to be nice and moderate today. If it, if it ends up feeling like a hungry day because it is strength work, sometimes, sometimes strength work really brings on the hungries for me. Feed what you need. When we're thinking about tomorrow, when we're always planning ahead, that doesn't mean that you should ignore today. <laughs> and in fact, I will tell you 10 seconds of rest. I don't ever want you to ignore your hunger today. Bent over row plus kickback is coming up next. So we're pulling in our core, back is super straight and tight. Row it up, kick it back to your hips, back to your armpits, and down. Elbows pointed back the entire time. When you feel hungry, that is your body telling you that it needs fuel. That is probably one of the biggest changes if you've been losing weight. One of the biggest things that you really have to think about is not ignoring your hunger. I mean, hopefully you weren't ignoring your hunger when you were losing weight, but I know I know that some of us think that that's some weird sign of virtue or something. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing twisting front kicks. I, I, hope, I hope that you were never hungry when you were losing weight. And therefore, I hope that you understand what hunger is. Hunger is a signal from your body that it's time to eat, that it needs fuel. So when you are doing these workouts, even though I'm calling them moderate, it might be... It might be a little bit past moderate for you if you haven't figured out what moderate is yet. And maybe working out this regularly is just overall a little bit above what you normally do. Honestly, there's lots of reasons why you might have a little bit of extra hunger. 10 seconds of rest. Excuse me, coming up next is a front punch side kick. So again, across your body, thinking about punching to the front while raising that leg out to the side. Specifically on a strength day like this, going from this strength work into tomorrow's core strength work, we're doing standing abs tomorrow, going from strength to strength means that I'm 
thinking about protein today. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm like counting my macros or trying to parse out exactly how many grams, things like that. I really don't overthink it that much, but I do, I do consider that with my choices. Coming up next, we're doing those squatted side bends. So, doggies, feet a little bit wider than hip width apart, weights up here on your shoulders, coming down into a squat, getting that elbow down to approximately your hip. Again, mine's kind of my upper thigh, my mid thigh. Really thinking about excellent form on the squat. We're not bending forward, we're bending to the side. That's why it's called a side bend. <laughs> we're really thinking about pulling in your core, using your abs and obliques, keeping your hips stable by squeezing those glutes. Lots of work going on here with this one. It's a little motion, but a lot of work. Whew, doggies, all right. All right, all right, we lived through it the second time. We've only got to do that one more time. Coming up next, we're doing drinky birds, going back and forth on these drinky birds. Ah, yes. This is the point in the workout where moderate starts to feel like a little bit of work. Moderate is always work. You guys, I think that is, that is the saving grace for me. You know, when I have been embracing moderate, as I am learning to do, I, I notice that I need to kind of point out to myself that I'm still working. I need to say out loud, oh, feel how sweaty I am. Oh, this was a good amount of work. I'm simply reinforcing it for myself as well as you. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing those twist down press ups. Feet a little bit wider or about hip width apart, excuse me. Weights just right here at your waist. We're gonna get opposite elbow to opposite knee and then press it on up. Opposite elbow to opposite knee and press it on up. And you're right, I'm not actually touching my elbow to my knee. I'm trying to, but it's not quite going to my knee. It's a little bit lower on my thigh than the side bends were, but it's not quite all the way down to my knee. But you're twisting across your body while doing that little bit of a half, almost deadlift motion. When it beeps again, we've got 10 seconds of rest and then we're done with the circuit for the second time. Awesome job. Okay, when it beeps again, we're doing those wide open side steps for the third and final time. Elbows up, elbows are at shoulder height. We're breathing, we're pulling in our core. We are super grateful that this is the beginning of the circuit and not the end. Although, I mean, it'd be nice if it was the end, but we still have a little bit more work to do. And that's why I started with what I consider truly the toughest exercise, or at least, well, no, I think those squatted side bends are actually maybe tougher. Kind of depends. They're about the same amount of toughness. Whew, doggies. And we are done with those. Excellent. Coming up next is the high knee single press up. Whew. Making sure that you're breathing. We can go a little bit slower if you need to. This is the thing. Whatever, whatever your body does, you can tell yourself whatever you want to. <laughs> I prefer to tell myself a beautiful message about how I am doing a great job. I got nice and sweaty. I totally built my muscles today. I totally get, did the exact right amount of work for my goals. My goal, my goal is to see and I mean see, like from my smart scale, is to see some muscle growth. Coming up next, we're doing X marks this top bot, so I'm gonna put one of these down. I don't really have, don't really have visual goals, honestly. Here's our chop and our chop from shoulder to hip and shoulder to hip. Making sure that you're not twisting too much. It is a slight twist. You are getting your obliques involved here, but we're really using our abdominal muscles, really stopping that chop by squeezing your abs. I don't, I mean, I look at my body, obviously, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not super vain about what it looks like. I'm not like, oh, I really want a six pack of abs or I really want to see muscles somewhere. Coming up next, we're doing snatches. I don't, I don't really think about my goals like that because I know, here we go with snatches. I know how truly fleeting those kinds of results are. I would much rather see an increase in my, my strength and my stamina. I'd like to be able to feel that I can pick things up and put them down and feel strong. And I'd like to actually see some numbers, some data. My smart scale, which I have, I probably don't have a link in the description. Um, coming up next, we're doing the bent over row plus kickback. I, I did a, a 
I did a video a couple months ago about how often should you weigh yourself and I talked about the scale that I have. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's by Eros. It's a smart scale. Um, or excuse me, it's by Inevi Fit. The, the specific model is the Eros model. It has a, um, an app that, that works with it so that you can see the trends over time. I love watching my body, my fat-free body mass go up. I love watching my muscles grow on screen. <laughs> it's kind of nice. This row and this kickback means that you are squeezing, squeezing, squeezing your abs. And then we're done with those, you guys. Okay, coming up next, twisting front kicks. Weights right here at your waist, more or less, maybe chest height. Wherever you wanna hold them, honestly, it's not really about where the weights are. It's much more about twisting into that kicking leg and really stabilizing both the kick and the stand. You are really working your quadriceps on this one with this slow front kick. It's really good for your knees, just so you know. Oh my goodness. And of course, we're using our abs and obliques. Pulling in our core, whew, concentrating and focusing on these last couple of reps because I find myself trying to get done with them. <laughs> Coming up next, we're doing the front punch side kick. <sighs> but I want you to think about what your goals are for this month. Front punch side kick, going across your body, whew, pulling in your core, thinking about excellent form throughout this workout. My friend, we're almost there which means that we've got to focus just a little bit longer, keeping it moderate, but getting strong, keeping it the exact right amount of work so that we can get on with the rest of our day and we can make the adaptations, which we are still making from that big push day that we had a couple days ago. When it beeps again, we'll get 10 seconds of rest. And coming up next, ah, yes, coming up next is those squatted side bends. <laughs> I'm going to be happy to get, get done with these. Weights right up here on your shoulders. Come on down in that squat. Side bend and up. Side bend and up. I'd love to know what kind of a goal you have. I mean, we're 11 days in. Are you noticing progress? Are you feeling like just mentally stronger, physically stronger? Are you noticing things with your balance? Are you noticing things with your body? Are you noticing that you can find your core easier? Are you just feeling sore? <laughs> Are you feeling like maybe it's not enough? What's, what's going through your mind and what's happening with your body? I love, I love to hear your progress reports. We've got 10 seconds of rest right now and then coming up next we're doing drinky birds because I'd love to know what you're aiming for. When you know what you're aiming for, you'll know when you've hit it. I do not have a specific number in mind. There's our drinky birds where we're thinking about whew, pulling that leg up behind us. That is the focus of this exercise. Yes, we're bending forward, but just bending forward means that you're curling your back. Squeeze your glute and pull that leg up behind you and your torso can't help but bend forward. I, I don't have any kind of numbers in mind for this month. 10 seconds of rest coming up next. Hey, it's the twist down press ups. This is it. You guys, after this, we're done. That's so exciting. We're twisting down, we're pressing up. We're getting that elbow to your knee, pressing it up. Elbow to your opposite knee, pressing it up. Gotta love this. Oh my gosh, when we're done with this, we are done, but we're not quite finished. I'm not even surprising you with that. You know there's a finisher. We are gonna drop the dumbbells for it though. I'm super excited about that. It's just body weight balance because I promised you that we are working on balance, balance, balance this month. My friend, if nothing else, ah, 10 seconds of rest. If nothing else, that's where I would love to see some gains. Stand on one foot. We're doing flying fast ups with a flying side crunch. So your hands are up overhead, your foot is back behind you. We're bringing your hands to your knees and then extending back out. And then one elbow out to the side while your leg crunches out to the side, an oblique crunch. Staying on that same foot, flying fast up, flying oblique crunch. Flying fast up, flying oblique crunch. We're just gonna do one interval on each side. Not a lot to the finisher today. I felt like we had already done the exact right amount of work. 10 seconds of rest and then we're gonna do that exact same thing on the other side. And then, and then, my friends, we will be better than done. We will be finished. Here we go, when it beeps. Crunch and side crunch. So fast up, 
right in the middle, making sure your biceps get all the way next to your ears every single time. This is such a complex exercise. Your standing leg is soft but strong, working up your hamstrings, your glutes. I know you feel it down in your calves as well. Upper and middle back, working on keeping your hands up over your head and then out to the side. <sighs> next time it beeps is the last time it's gonna beep. Oh my goodness. What a great job you did. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some arm circles and cool this down. You know, we didn't move fast today. We never need to move fast. Sometimes it's nice to move fast. I mean, again, I'm a cardio girl. <laughs> I like to move fast. But even when we're moving slower, slow and controlled with strength work like this, we get sweaty. This was enough, my friend. This is the kind of work that is going to get you the kind of results that you can see or feel however you want to. Tell me what kind of results you're looking for. I would love to hear from you for that. And make sure, make sure, like I said, because in order to leave a comment, you have to be on desktop or mobile. And I know that when you watch me on TV, that's kind of a pain. And thank you. Thank you for that. I do actually really appreciate it when you come back to the video later and leave me a comment. That's very kind of you. But also make sure that you get the download that's in the description box. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers. Oh my gosh, that nice stretch on your chest. Oh, that feels beautiful. And then close it up. Give yourself a big hug and a pat on your sweaty back. Ah, tomorrow, as promised. Tomorrow is core strength recovery day. So it's nice active rest. Very, very, very easy, very gentle. We're doing standing abs. We're gonna stay on our feet tomorrow, I know. I've had you down on the ground a couple of times already during this program, I know. So we're gonna stay on our feet tomorrow. Ah, it's gonna be a really nice day. So make sure that you're eating your baseline, eating when you're hungry, paying attention to protein if you'd like to. I mean, that's, that's one of those things that will come with time. Don't feel like you have to be perfect with this program, like I have to eat exactly right, I have to do the exercises exactly right. Nah, we're just learning, we're getting there. You did such a great job today, my friend. Thank you so much for working out with me. Make sure you subscribe before you go and I will see you tomorrow.